Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, now we will discuss what is the so far we have discussed both uh, uh, profit maximizing producers both short run supply curve as well as long run supply curve. Now, what is the counterpart in industry or entire market supply curve right. So, when short run supply curve we are talking about right. So, whoever the producer their supply curve is this kind of thing we are getting long run also we are getting this kind of things ok. So, at that price level whoever is producing right their supply curve is upward sloping and e how the entire market supply curve we have to find out we have discussed that earlier let me repeat again let me remind you again what is that basically you have to horizontal or take the horizontal aggregation of all these supply curves right at uh, whoever the uh, producers uh, are operating in the market. Right. So, definitely its counterpart long run supply market supply curve will be upward sloping exactly here also upward sloping kind of thing ok. But since in the long run everybody who will operate most of them will get a zero profit only right. So, there is a tendency that par as long run supply curve of the entire industry or in the entire market may be horizontal that kind of sense we are getting from the earlier video when we are discussing that free entry free exit motive will make that everybody get zero profit right. Why? So, suppose look at here, but let me just a short run case ok. If individual producer supply curve is upward sloping entire market supply curve will be upward sloping or as well uh, no doubt about that, but one caveat here is that this market supply curve will be more flatter right why because you are getting horizontal summation or horizontal aggregation of all the individual supply curves it will be flatter and what is the implication of the flatter it will be more elastic flatter supply curve it will be more elastic right because quantity supplied will be much more uh, much more flexible or much more responsive to the price changes right it depends on say some producer say the the, the uh, price line right which is tolerable to me given my technology right someone else may not have that much toleration because he he has little bit or uh, he is not that much efficient like me right so his cost structure is little bit more than me right so to the extent whatever cost i can tolerate right he may not be able to tolerate right so as a result long or uh, entire market supply amount will be much more responsive because even if I am producing uh, 5 or 6 more people like me are producing some people are not producing at all because they cannot tolerate that, that much lower price right they will exit from the market. So, in that way long run supply curve is basically will be the more flatter than the in long, long run entire market supply curve will be more flatter than the individual supply curve that is no doubt about that after horizontal aggregation you will get a flatter line. But its implication is that it will be more responsive to the price change as a result more elastic ok more elastic supply curve ok. Now, let us uh, discuss why the short run uh, in the long run market supply curve can be horizontal ok. Look suppose this is the short run demand curve this is the short run supply curve this is the demand curve this is the supply curve we are talking about of course we are measuring quantity demand rate quantity supplied both in the horizontal axis price in the vertical axis and we are talking about this is for the entire market ok. So, many uh, producers are there ok. Now, when this is the short run supply curve market supply curve right. So, this is the equilibrium price ok. Now, suppose for some reason for some reason say suppose this product is milk ok and milk we know that it is a it is a balanced diet and it has lot of nutrient kind of components. So, usually lot of health benefit right. So, that is why usually doctors and any uh, dietitian they used to prescribe no that you take milk right. Suppose whatever known knowledge we have that milk has this uh, health benefit that health benefit tomorrow due to new scientific discovery another health benefit is known to the customers milk has another health benefit. 
So, what will happen? The kind of demand for that milk was there in the market, perhaps that will increase because it, it is more nutritious now it is known to the people, known to the customer, known to the society. Right. So, suppose short run demand curve due to that discovery, short run demand curve shifts to D1. As a result, what will happen? Price line will move that way, little bit above. So, the people whose combined supply is denoted by this S line, okay, now they will face this kind of little bit higher price. So, they will suppose at this price level they are getting 0 profit, now they are getting some positive profit. Since they are getting positive profit, what will happen? Because this positive profit will make the, this business more lucrative, okay. so some potential entrant will enter into the market. As a result, supply curve will also shift, suppose supply curve shift until this. So, price level is becoming here. Look, when price level was this, that time the people who were tolerating, who were delivering the product in the market, who were producing the product in the market, right? They were getting all zero profit, right? Now, when price is little bit, since price is little bit above that, they are getting positive profit. So the new or entra, entering of the new producer into the market will not stop at this level some of the existing producers are still getting positive profit that will at, attract more new entrant. They will enter. So, that process will make sure that supply curve is actually is here. Okay. So, in this way short run fluctuation in demand and supply makes sure that price line is coming back to this level. So, that is why one supply curve supply market supply quantity was this at that price level, again at that some same price level this. So, we can talking about we can tell that this horizontal red color line is the long run supply curve of the entire industry, entire market. Okay. So, let me clarify short run supply curve will be upward sloping individual market since all of individuals upward sloping market also upward sloping long run individual supply curve is upward sloping, but individuals will not be able to operate that in upward sloping segment rather the lowest point of the upward, upward uh, sloping uh, segment of the MC curve they will operate with 0 profit. That 0 profit makes or that 0 profit is responsible for some level of price. At that price level some supply will be there in the entire market in the long run, but if for some reason like this discovery of uh, new health benefit of a particular commodity we are talking about, okay, demand will go up as a result short run supply uh, short run demand will go up that will pull the price up, okay, that will make each of these people getting positive profit. That positive profit makes the entire into or entry into the market by the new entrants that will make sure that supply is increasing because new producers are entering. So, in this mechanism say suppose it is not health say suppose when say a tobacco product okay, we know that lot of health hazards are there of the tobacco product. So, we, we know and that is why uh, still certain demands are there for the tobacco product may, may, many people are not consuming that product. Now, suppose tomorrow another new negative uh, health hazard. Uh, discovered about the tobacco product that will make people to that will make uh, people to uh, even demand even becoming less S some new people will uh, new customers will uh, stop uh, consuming this product because whatever known health hazard was there earlier after this discovery more health hazard is known now to the society okay so as a result what will happen demand curve will short run demand curve will moved down leftward that will pull down the price below given the supply curve. Okay. When price is going below the, this this than this level okay, the existing producers will getting negative profit. So, depending on the tolerable tolerate, tolerate, uh, capacity of the existing producer some of them will go out of the market exit the market. right? So, as a result supply curve also move leftward. 
okay. So, so when supply curve will move, move left toward again price will come up. Okay. So, in this demand supply scenario short run demand supply fluctuation will make sure that long run supply curve will be this kind of thing is a horizontal line. Okay. That is the long run supply curve of the entire market we are talking about entire the competitive market we are talking about right. Of course, two caveat is there what are those? Uh, in certain cases long run supply curve of the market also can be upward sloping it is there in your book please have a look there two cases are mentioned in your book one case is that the product we are talking about if that product supply is inelastic in nature then it is very difficult to be maintaining or this kind of horizontal long run supply curve could prevail like say suppose uh, farm business right say agricultural product right agricultural product is uh, demand is there in the market and people are uh, getting uh, attracted or this agricultural business or production of agricultural commodities is becoming more and more lucrative to the people. So, people are trying to enter into this business. Yeah. So, uh, many people are trying who are not doing all they are producing this agricultural commodity they are also trying to produce agricultural commodity. So, what will happen they need land right agriculture you have to cultivate no you need some some upper surface of uh, earth right some piece of land right. So, unfortunately demand for land is increasing, but supply of land cannot can't increase like the milk and other products what we are tobacco what we are talking about. Both demand can increase supply also can increase supply can fall depending on what is the market demand and all right. But this unfortunately here what we are talking about it is it is an upper surface of the or cultivable land right cultivable land is uh, is not uh, even if demand is increasing again and again right you cannot increase that. It is it has a it has a what should I say maximum amount of uh, supply right beyond that you, you cannot supply right you cannot generate any more supply right. So, as a result in this kind of situation right of course, supply curve even in the long run market supply curve it will be upward sloping right because um, uh, when demand is there, but supply can no longer be increased further. So, what will happen? people who are demanding for that right perhaps they will ask for uh, they will be willing to pay more price for that right. Not only that since enough demand is there realizing that who are the supplier of the land they can increase also the price the entire market force or market mechanism will make sure that price is increasing ok. So, price is increasing to give, 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 deliver more product means what supply curve is upward sloping right. So, that is one situation ok when that even the long run market supply curve can be upward sloping this is one case another case is there ok. See when we are talking about the existing producers will earn zero profit in the long run right this zero profit we are talking about not everybody earning zero profit we are talking about the marginal farm marginal producer marginal farm or marginal producer. Okay, marginal producer is earning zero profit. Marginal producer, who is the marginal producer? The some price level is there. If price level little bit falls, very negligible amounts, very small amount even falls than the existing price level, the producer who will first exit from the market, he is the marginal producer. Say five people, you, me, and so many other friends, we are producing same product, right? it may not be the case all of we have the same cost structure depending on the technology even if you me everybody are using same technology I may be more efficient than you or some other friend may be more efficient than me like that. So, who is more efficient his cost structure will be less right. So, as a result okay, all of our, our cost structure may not be the same. So, definitely which cost structure say out of these five people right the suppose five different people have five different cost structure right. The person who has the highest cost structure he is the marginal producer here he is getting zero profit in the long run equilibrium right and others are enjoying some positive profit but very small amount. Now, if price level little bit falls right what will happen that producer no that marginal farmer right the fifth one whose cost level is above all other four right 
he will no longer be tolerate that price level because his profit will be negative in that case. So, he will go out. So, when we are talking about zero profit condition that is about the marginal producer okay. and, and since different people have different cost structure what will happen right. So, definitely you can remember when we have discussed sometimes back right we told that when the supply curve is upward sloping the people who are serving more and more right direction of the supply curve they are relatively less efficient less efficient in the sense that their cost of production is more right. So, definitely if different producer who are serving the market they have different cost structure ok. So, of course, when you need more supply right. So, new producer needs to enter into the market to increase the supply of that product in the competitive market right to ok. So, definitely when new producers are entering into the market if their cost structure is more than the existing producers what will happen they need more price otherwise they cannot enter into the market right. So, in that case of course, market supply curve also can be upward sloping because supply can be increased by new entrant new producer to uh, engage into production activity unfortunately, the new producers cost structure is more than the existing ones. So, new producer need more price than the existing ones or than the, than the price whatever is tolerable to the existing producer ok. So, if that is the case the existing producer or all the custom all the producers uh, may not have the same cost structure ok. Then uh, this kind of even competitive market entire market supply curve in the long run can be upward sloping also. So, in this two cases are mentioned in your book please have a look ok you will understand that ok. So, with this uh, we completed uh, our discussion of competitive market ok our next chapter is basically monopoly market right. So, let us just give some uh, background some uh, preliminary understanding about the monopoly market and then a producers uh, optimum product decision optimum output quantity choice ok. If he produces if you can remember what we told that under the set of this paribas condition under the some sort of given cost structure ok or factor market side and technology side taken as given ok. If that producer operates in a competitive market what will be his optimum quantity decision optimum means profit maximizing of course. Vis a vis if he operates in a monopoly market what will be his optimum um, quantity choice vis a vis uh, if he operates in a monopolistically competitive market what will be optimum choice in that this way we will discuss 3 4 different markets competitive market will complete now the next monopoly market ok. So, let us first introduce uh, what is monopoly ok why monopoly arises and all those things those are the preliminary uh, background about monopoly market and then we will discuss uh, his uh, optimum decision ok optimum quantity choice if this producer operates in a monopoly kind of product market ok what will happen that we will discuss. So, what is monopoly? Monopoly is basically a market where it is a single sellers market only one producer. So, a market where only one producer is there ok and the product whatever that producer is producing or delivering in the market that product does not have any close substitute ok. In, if that is the case then this market will be called monopoly market ok. So, you understand that the product it does not have any close substitute and one only one producer is there who is producing that monopoly market. So, that is uh, he is the sole tiger in the market right and since he is the only producer ok in the or only supplier of that product right he is not uh, price taker anymore like price taker in the competitive market everybody was price taker not only the producer customers also all of them are price taker here look when we are talking about monopoly market we are telling that single sellers market we are not talking about any about the anything about the buyers. So, by default you can assume that whatever assumption about the buyers was there in competitive market same sort of buyers are there a large number of buyers perhaps are there ok perhaps ok. So, we are talking about only single sellers thing right. So, seller definitely a price maker not price taker here as at all ok. He will decide what price I will sell 
to maximize my profit. Okay. Now, let us first discuss what are the factors that may make monopoly to arise. Okay. Three factors are there, all these things are there in the book, in your book, in monopoly chapter, right. So, three factors are there, okay. the product, whatever this producer is producing, to produce that product, one essential ingredient is there, like raw material, okay. essential ingredient is there, which is owned by one single person. And that is why that producer is enjoying monopoly, because see I am producing some product, to produce that product I need some raw materials right. So, that raw materials whatever is required to produce this product all raw materials I own. So, definitely I am enjoying monopoly things and I will not willing to share that thing to anybody right. Say so, suppose some, some of my friend is telling that hey, you sell some of these raw materials to me I can also start business. If I realize that I am the sole owner of those, those raw material perhaps I will not tell uh, give to him I will not sell to him right. Nobody wants more competitor, being a producer nobody wants a more competitor in my uh, market right. So, I will not. So, first reason is that one essential ingredient, essential raw material, essential input is owned by one particular uh, owner or one particular person or organization. Then it can uh, be responsible to for uh, arising of a monopoly market. Okay. You can understand say DBRs, D E B W E R S, DBRs company, some of you may heard this is the name of a company, okay. it is a diamond merchant, diamond merchant, DBRs company. Okay. So, diamonds uh, if you if you uh, if you know or understand the, uh, the uh, production diamond, see diamond industry is essential ingredient is basically diamond and with using the diamond many different types of jewelry and all they are producing right. So, in uh, and major producer of diamond in the in the world is basically South Africa, South Africa one country in Africa, okay, Africa continent okay, that is South Africa. So, this uh, not only all the mines diamond mines in South Africa uh, that this DBS company own uh, DBS companies share almost 80 percent of the total global diamond, diamond production entire global diamond production DBS company share is more than 80 percent. So, although DBS is not a diamond monopoly in the diamond product market a diamond jewelry market it is almost a monopoly, okay. significantly 80 percent 90 percent share of the entire diamond market is occupied by this DBS company. So, you can understand the reason what we are telling why uh, how that kind of thing is making one monopoly to arise or in this particular case almost near monopoly to arise. Okay. So, essential ingredient owned by a particular organization or particular person okay. that is one thing. Second thing sometimes government n m e n t government decree c r w d e c r w decree or gov government uh, uh, rule or law whatever it is right say government is telling or giving the production right to one particular person or one particular organization okay as a result say suppose some product right say product x. Okay. So, in India government Indian government is not allowing anybody else other than say company z to produce that product okay, or to produce or deliver that service or that product. Okay. In India there is an excellent monopoly is this kind of things say Indian railway, Indian railway. Okay. Indian railway is the organization any rail related any service transport service say passenger transport or uh, freight service goods and other things uh, uh, transport everything is delivered by this Indian railway. Okay. So, in India by government of India's law or rule okay, other than Indian railway nobody is allowed to enter into this railway uh, it is a service basically. So, that service delivery. Okay, 
other than Indian railway no nobody is allowed. So, Indian railway in India is a classic example of monopoly. Okay, it is a monopoly market basically. Okay. So, many customers are there you me so many uh, uh, thousands of crores of people are there we, we take service of Indian railway. Okay. But not more than one producer other than this Indian railway. So, government rule government decree by decree government is not allowing anybody other than Indian railway to enter into the uh, railway service delivering business in India right that is the monopoly, but this monopoly is arising earlier monopoly was arising one fellow owning the essential ingredient all the essential ingredient here government is not allowing anybody okay, to enter into that business. Another kind of monopoly arises that is called natural monopoly natural monopoly, where the technology through which the production or uh, that commodity is produced right. The technology is such that if one producer produce the kind of cost he will incur, if multiple producer, two producer, three producer try to produce right, each of them will incur per unit more cost. Okay, say one producer is producing say when is producing that product say per unit cost is say rupees 30. Okay. If that amount uh, 3 producer or 4 producer multiple number of producer 2 producer they want to try to they want to produce that commodity each of them will get average cost okay, or average total cost whatever that will be more than 30 rupees. Okay. The technology is such that when this arises when the situation where uh, the business or that service delivery or that production process okay, needs huge amount of infrastructural cost at the beginning. Okay. So, overall fixed cost that is we can talk we can uh, think of as a fixed cost kind of thing that is uh, substantially larger than the marginal cost. Okay, marginal cost means additional production, additional unit of production of that commodity, you will get negligible cost. Okay, but initial setup okay, requires a, a huge amount of a, a expenditure. Okay, one example say uh, electricity distribution, telephone distribution, water supply, all these things, right? You will see that say electricity distribution, it is wiring and that overhead kind of. Uh, infrastructure kind of setup no it needs very high uh, expenditure vis a vis say one city 100 100 households are there okay so to deliver the electricity to each of those to those 100 households if tomorrow another household come 101 households that additional household to deliver that same electricity cost is negligible almost no cost some marginal increment will be there okay but whenever only one family is there or two families there or 10 families are there vis a vis 100 families are there when you are starting the distribution of the electricity right you have to set up the wiring and all the entire city. Okay. So, initial that infrastructure cost is very huge very large compared to the marginal cost. Okay. So, as a result average total cost curve will be uh, substantial portion of average total cost curve will be continuously falling. Okay. So, that is and since average total cost curve is falling this kind marginal cost curve definitely below you know that marginal cost curve will cut the lowest point of the ABC curve uh, average total cost curve of course, ABC as well okay, at its lowest point. Okay. So, this cost average total cost curve is always above the marginal cost curve within the uh, uh, what should I say substantial. Uh, segment of the production of that product. Okay. Exactly similar to telephone uh, infrastructure, water supply infrastructure and all those things. right? So, that natural monopoly is natural this terminology is coming that technology itself is such that there is a monopoly element involved. Okay. As one producer is producing because marginal cost is continuously falling. right? So, as one producer is producing 20 units vis a vis 40 units vis a vis 80 units. So, as he is producing larger and larger okay, it is a economies of scale kind of thing he is enjoying. So, average cost is falling, 
vis a vis say suppose this is 100 unit. Okay. When he is producing this much of average total cost per unit of quantity he is facing. But if two producer produces having the same technology that 100 units suppose each of them will produce 50 50. Okay. So, what will happen each of them will face this kind of average total cost per unit amount. So, as a result total cost okay, of the society combining the total cost of these two producers okay, will be more than this one single producer. So, the technology is such that it has some monopoly element in, in involved inside. Okay. So, one producer if you allow he will continuously get economies of scale kind of situation. Okay. More economic way more at the lower cost lower average cost he or she can produce able to produce. So, these are the three factors for which monopoly can arise. Okay. So, in our next lecture we will discuss how in a monopoly market a producers optimum quantity decision. Look we told that any profit maximizer right his target or any producer any entrepreneur his target is to maximize profit. So, pi. So, his target is to maximize pi right pi has two counterpart revenue and cost right. So, when we are discussing under the Ceteris Paribas condition given the cost structure given the technology and fact, fact, factor market side okay, if alternative market if competitive product market he operates what is the decision I, I told this thing many times this clarification is not there in the book is not there in many books. Okay. We have to be very clear about this part that is why I am again and again reminding you. Okay. Now, vis a vis if he operates in a monopoly market, vis a vis if he operates in a oligopoly market or something like that right. So, definitely under the Ceteris Paribas condition for the cost structure. So, in this kind of situation right this is always given cost side is always given. Revenue will change if competitive market his revenue structure will be one, if monopoly market his revenue structure will be something else oligopoly market it will be perhaps something even else like that right. So, we will talk about and this revenue structure is basically the uh, what is the demand curve demand for the your product you being a producer what is the demand for your product is there uh, by the potential customers of that product in the market right. So, I, I will be interested to know that first that will tell me that yes yes how much product I can produce so that my product will be sold in the market and so on right. So, revenue structure or what is the demand curve for my product is there in the market that is the main thing which will change from one market one type of demand curve another market another type of demand curve and so on. Okay. But cost structure everywhere is same because not same the kind of context kind of situation we are discussing all these uh, equilibrium of a producer in different kind of product market that there we are assuming under the Ceteris Paribas condition for the cost structure that is why the same cost structure same three cost curves what we have discussed in this kind of diagram whatever cost curves we have discussed same type of cost curves we will keep also there in monopoly, but in a different kind of demand curve then what will be the optimum decision in that way we will proceed in subsequent chapters in for different type of market oligopoly market monopolistic competitive market and so on. Okay. Let us stop here.